Finally, the last two regimes that we're going to cover is case number 6 and case number 8. So, as I already mentioned, all these cases are numbered by gradually reducing back pressure. So, for, if we have some pressure, back pressure that's below B5, where we had the shock wave sitting at the exit, so we have now PB6. There's not going to be any change here, so the jet will still come out at a supersonic speed, same one as would be in case 7, but rather than smoothly going out, it will basically undergo through a, a series of shock waves uh, to reduce its, to increase its pressure back to feet B6. So now we have PE is less than P, PB. Many solution possibles. And um, as far as the flow in the nozzle is concerned, this is isotropic flow. The increase of entropy happens afterwards. Finally, case 8 is supersonic exit. So we call this overexpanded because if you imagine this PB pressure here, if the nozzle were only this big, only, only this extended after the throat, then the exit pressure would be matched to PB. But the nozzle expands further after that, and that's why we call that case overexpanded. And opposite to that, finally case 8, which cannot be in this case much below 7, but a little bit, so PB8, we have the case of underexpanded nozzle. Again, it, it, the exit pressure is still the same as PB7, so we have now PE larger than PB, and uh, we also can say that PE6 uh, yeah, equals PE7 equals P. E8. And we can also say that for case 8 many solutions are possible. So that covers basically all the regimes that can happen in the nozzle. And remember we were only covering here the case where the uh, in the, in the converging part of the nozzle, first part of the nozzle, we have acceleration starting from subsonic regime. There would be a whole series of cases similar to this if this were supersonic entrance, but this would go beyond the scope of this course.